trying to put that into context. Like, if, if your friend benches 500 pounds and my friend benches 505 pounds, I'm not going to call your friend a pussy. <laughs> Hey, this is Mike from Sons Liberty Gunworks, and uh, we're going to be looking at the M76 and the M89. I get a lot of questions about what are the differences in them, and you know, I want to go into a little bit of detail on what those differences are, right? One of the things that's similar about them is they both use steel barrel nuts, right? These barrel nuts are kind of overbuilt. They're heavy duty, and I think that the steel in the barrel nuts adds to the rigidity of the entire system, okay? If you look at the M89, first the M76, the M89 barrel nut is just a little bit longer and it's going to create a little bit more internal surface area bearing surface but i think that it kind of makes it even a little bit more rigid because that barrel nut extends just a little bit further and it's it's getting a little bit better purchase on the inside of that rail the m76 is going to have a little bit slimmer extrusion a lot of people like that a lot of people like the slimmer extrusion of the m76 the m89 is a little bit wider extrusion now there's pros and cons to that, right? The the M76 rail is going to be a little bit lighter, and some people like the way that you know that slimmer rail feels. The M89, we did that. We gave it a little bit wider internal diameter to give us more real estate around the gas block. So whenever you put stuff, that, whether it's a light uh, or whether it's some kind of uh, other M lock attachment, you know, bipods on the bottom, you're curating more separation between the gas block and those M lock attachments. The M76, you really don't get contact there. We just gave it a little bit more, more room around there. Another thing too, the slimmer rails, they're gonna heat up a little bit faster simply because they're closer to the source of the heat. The M89 is probably gonna have a little bit more rigidity simply because the barrel nut is a little bit longer and the extrusion is a little bit heavier. So you have a little bit of an overbuilt extrusion, more material, and then of course the barrel nut being slightly longer Okay, it's creating more surface area. Okay, it's, 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 you have more of a bearing surface there. Both of them are extremely tough. I think this thing's just a bit overbuilt. Like in a good way. Like, I mean, overkill's not a bad thing, <laughs> you know? The biggest difference between them is that this is gonna have a, the locking mechanism on the M89, okay, I think is a little bit stronger. I mean, uh, but that's, let me try to put that into context. Like, if if he, your friend benches 500 pounds and my friend benches 505 pounds, I'm not going to call your friend a pussy. Like, they're both incredibly strong, right? One of them, I think, is a little bit stronger. Both of them are more than adequate of maintaining zero on enablers and minimal deflection. One of the unique features of the M89 rail if you look, there are these individual cuts, the, the rail kind of tapers. Whenever you tighten these set screws here, we tighten these cross bolts, okay? Each one of these cross bolts acts as an individual wedge, and it's driving the rail back into the upper receiver. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a novel, it's a novel barrel nut. This is not you know, something that's been out before. Um, it's very, very, very tough, very rigid. The mounting on the M89 is probably some of the most, it's probably the most intuitive system I've ever seen. You take your barrel nut, you grease your threads with some anti-seize, you're gonna tighten, loosen, tighten, loosen, tighten, loosen three times You work those threads, right? When you go to tighten it for that final time, you are going to apply 60 pounds of torque, an anti-rotational steel dowel, this anti-rotational dowel works really well with our uppers or uppers that have that hole for that for that steel dowel. But if you don't have that, we still have these ears on the side to act as an anti-rotational uh, feature. Once you have that mounted on, you're gonna tighten these bolts starting in the center and you're gonna tighten, then you're gonna work your way in a star pattern, kind of like you would uh, lug nuts on a car. And whenever those cross bolts come to a hard stop, it's done. It's, the, it's one of the most simple, intuitive rails I've ever uh, I've ever mounted. It's pretty. It's pretty nice. I think you'll dig it. The wedge lock uses these wedges here to basically create, you know, force as they slide together against that barrel nut, 
and it, it's also extremely rigid. Both of these things are what I would call combative rails. By combative rails, I mean keeping things like deflection in mind, keeping things like being able to drop and then, you know, enablers maintaining zero and, and things like that, or the position of a bipod not changing the point of impact. So when I say combative rail, I mean like they're overbuilt and they're meant for pretty hard use and abuse, again, with enablers in mind. The M89 is going to be a little bit more, I think, overbuilt. Both of them, though, are both of them are some of the best options you can find in terms of rigidity, strength, the uh, actual extrusion materials and types. So those that's the differences, and that is the mounted instructions for the for the M89. And uh, if you guys have any questions? Definitely hit us up or hit up Big Techs, and they'll get you fixed up.